Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name is David, I'm a conductor of classical music and this means I am performing music that was written several hundred years ago. I'd like to ask, why do we do that? Why do we perform music that is so old? Let's start. First of all, for you it might feel totally normal because you love to go to a classical concert, maybe you're a musician yourself, but when you think about it just for a second, it's kind of weird what we do. Let's say there was a composer 300 years ago, he wrote a piece, yes, that was then performed, but now, 300 years later, we still perform the same piece without much change at all. Why do we do that? Why do come people to concerts listening to this 300-year-old piece and idolizing the composer? Well, this is, this is good music, this is how it has to be. I think just because it is like it is, is not enough reason for it to be as it is. So let's look at that from two angles. First, the personal one, that means why do you listen to classical music? And then, second, a uh, society one, why do we listen to classical music? Okay, so if you go to a classical music concert or you listen to a recording, how does that make you feel? Does it feel good? Does it spark joy? And, and why does it do that? Well, music is, I think, entertainment. And not in a bad way. It's like, it's like a good story. When you go and listen to a piece, that can be like a story without words, just like an actor would tell an engaging story. So with a big palette of, of colors, giving you surprises or, or melancholy or um, joy from now and then. But it is engaging because there is one person that is communicating to you. But in music, there's something special that goes beyond the words, something that I like to call magic, because it gives you awe in face of, in face of beauty, something that you can't convey with words, something that, that speaks directly to your heart. And also something that speaks to your head. I find music very intellectually stimulating. I want to understand it. I want to, I want to see the hidden things. I want to understand what's not obvious about the music. Uh, those were actually, when I decided to study music, the two reasons. I wrote down in my journal, I want to study music because it speaks to my head and to my heart. And next to the feeling of being entertained and being in awe and being intellectually engaged, I think there is also the feeling of connection. You're not sitting there alone. You're a part of a group. Actually, you're taking an active part in a listening activity. So this brings us to society. You're not the only one listening, and I think this is important. This makes it a, a group thing. This is what we do. It's what your parents tell you is normal. It's something that school or media or other influential people tell you is normal. For me, that's very much the case because I just happened to be the son of two musicians. I grew up with music. Uh, there was a piano in our household, of course. I'd play the piano. I'd listen to classical music all day. I sang in the choir. Classical music was very much normal to me. That means it's not only about your personal experience and personal enjoyment, but also something about a bigger thing. That also, in terms of generations, when you think about it, Mozart died more than 230 years ago, so Mozart could have been your great, 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 great grandfather. Probably he was. All those generations between you and him have played his music. So this makes us part of a long tradition, something that goes beyond ourselves and goes back to our parents, their parents and their parents. But with this belonging to a bigger community comes another aspect. Why do we listen to Mozart? Because we just like what we hear, because we think it's normal, and also because it might be expected from us when we consider ourselves a member of cultivated and educated society. It's also a status game. When there is an elite group of, of intellectuals or of people you look up to and you want to take part of it, want to be a part of it, then you do what they do. And maybe that's listening to Mozart and going to classical music concerts. Maybe then you think not as much about what your own personal experience is than maybe you should. And finally, is it true that classical music is a part of our cultural DNA? And who decides if that's the case? 
It's a tricky question, I think. In Germany, for example, the government gives big money, gives big financial aids to the classical orchestras, because otherwise they just wouldn't survive. But in Italy, for example, the birthland of opera, only 100 years ago, every tiny city had its own musical theater, had its own opera house. But then the interest for opera did decline a little bit, the government did not help, so most of those little opera houses died. Hmm. On a final note, I told you I'd like to do music because it speaks both to my head and to my heart. The interesting thing is, I'm not that big of a listener of classical music. I only rarely go to concerts. When I go, what I'm looking for is what I was describing at this, as this magic, the feeling of of beauty. But my enjoyment I take mostly from being the active part, from performing music. So studying music, trying to understand it, trying to understand the story behind that and then telling this story to the audience together with other people. That's what I enjoy the most. So to close this, we play old music because A, it gives us personal pleasure and B, because we are part of a community that tells us it's important. If there's anything you feel that is missing, I'd be very happy if you'd share it in a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in the storytelling aspect of music, here's a closer look at a very surprising piece. And if you're interested in early music in general, here are the basics you need to know. If you like, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.